next is flood control and uh, we discussed quite a lot about that how actually we can restrict the soil erosion and along with that how we can actually conserve water and recharge also the ground water. But in case of flood also in a within a watershed area it is important uh, to actually also see how we can uh, deal with uh, floods. Now there are various ways that uh, flood can be you know managed. One is flood walls which is uh, uh, one of the most common way common structure that we see in and around us normally made with brick, machinery, concrete or combination of all those things even sometime uh, sand uh, bags are also being used. How it is actually basically done is that you have kind of a uh, suppose that water level up to this range and then you try to have first earth filling and then you go for you know try to make the height of this earth filling in such a way that it can also you know take care of the uh, original uh, ground surface. The original ground surface is basically the surface area which has the top soil where actually majority of the agricultural purposes or agricultural practices will be carried out. The removed top soil what is being done here that it is reused for uh, the embankment construction. So, you do not allow uh, the top soil to go away, you bring in back and do the, the filling with uh, that uh, soil which otherwise could have lost from the system. So, this kind of earth filling also quite common and this is done to avoid uh, uh, flood or impact of flood severely on the other side where habitation and also agricultural practices are going on. But of course, we know that uh, beyond a certain point uh, this kind of structure also may not work. Sandbag this you have seen many places, stones uh, riprap also are being used along the side of the river. Then gabion walls also are here used if you anticipate that your water level could actually rise with the rainy season. Then concrete and brick walls <coughs> are often used and these are seen uh, largely in the uh, developed countries and uh, uh, sometime also you can see it in some coastal uh, regions of India in a different format. Concrete and block work these are also uh, visible in many parts of our countries along the you know sea coast. Concrete bag work is another option that people these days use quite a lot. So, we have this kind of options available with us to reduce the impact of uh, flood on the ecosystem. One step ahead if we want to go with the technology options, we have choir rolls also which can be used as you see here, you know the choirs that you get that can be made roll and then you can across the slope pack it. So, that if in case of uh, rising of water it can actually get uh, soaked there in this square and then it actually also allows to the soil to get the appropriate amount of moisture. So, this helps uh, in both way. Aqua dams is not you know that much common in our countries. Open stall asphalt also we may not see very frequently uh, in our country. There are uh, measures like you know boulders, this is common in many places of our country as well. Wave written sea walls, this you will see in uh, marine drive area. So, uh, whenever there is uh, you know tide comes, so the water actually hit these walls. So, this uh, somehow protect the uh, civilians and also the inland agricultural purposes or any other you know human related activities. Concrete revetment, this also reduces the flow of water as well as the soil loss from the particular affected area. So, the flood water if it comes you know suddenly then it uh, the flow of water can be reduced quite significantly by concrete revetment. Combination of wave return walls and boulders, this is not again very common in our country 
but is an another you know potential techniques you know, can be used across the coastal line all these flood control measures are also useful for river bank erosion control so this is why actually i am sharing all the options um, that you know in across the world people use so it is kind of a basket of options that i'm trying to share with you given you know situation and and opportunities some of these options can also be utilized um, as i said that for river bank erosion but wave written seawalls and boulders these two you know are used for coastal watershed mainly and to reduce the sea tide erosion control okay so we have actually a lot of technological options with us to also you know to reduce the impact of flood but we may not be able to totally stop it but the effect can certainly be reduced if proper measures are taken now why we listen quite often that embankments have failed to do its job if the embankment has done with all right technology why then it fails now there are various uh, uh, reasons uh, for that some of those reasons i would like to discuss here one is that overtopping as you see that the embankment has been made but the water amount of water coming into the system is so high the volume is so high that even when you have built this embankment you actually anticipate certain amount of assumptions are involved that how much water actually even in maximum you know rainy season could come up but if your that assumption also is you know failed or means it crosses beyond even that limit then certainly the water will flow above your embankment and this kind of situation are actually rare but this can happen and in that case your embankment in actually fails to do its job second case is overturning what happen is that sometime because of certain uh, movement in the soil or along with that the again amount of water if sudden flow of water increases heavily then there is a chance that your embankment structure can be overturned and this kind of situation we often see in many cases in and around us so that is another point uh, Uh, that we should keep in mind while establishing this kind of embankment that overturning of embankment can also takes place structural failure that's purely you know technological engineering failure which can certainly be avoided if not 100% but at least engineering wise technically this can be easily rectified so as you see here that there is a crack in the embankment structure but uh, as i said this can be avoided to a large extent seepage seepage is another issue that actually uh, takes place very si- silently and often uh, when we establish this kind of structure uh, we need to actually uh, look into this aspect that seepage can also takes place so due to seepage sometime our embankment structure also fails to do the job in appropriate manner piping or peeping so that is uh, you know another problem that sometime your embankment actually fails and that sometime happens for two reasons one could be that it is not properly established the ground verification was not done uh, appropriately because if you see that you have kept a huge amount of gap from your support system sidewall support system then there is a chance that water may actually you know cross your foundation of embankment and then can weaken uh, this uh, embankment structure so these are few actually potential you know, failures of embankment that uh, sometime construct so there are various other options also for flood control these are reservoirs dam channel improvements dredging and desilting all of those things are very common and uh, i'm sure that all of you are uh, quite well aware of then comes uh, you know these days biomitigation 
is coming heavily and that how actually you can utilize different kind of plant species and also how you can actually create a, a bio drainage uh, system so that the drainage network can work in an appropriate manner. You can do it either improving the existing channel capacity or creating new channels. Uh, this can also be done by diverting the flood water by constructing natural or artificially built uh, channels. We can also do it improving the catchment areas through afforestations to control the seal, the peak runoff and also the velocities of the water. Improvement of subsurface drainage system is also critical uh, you know, for flood control measures. As you see in, you know, in this picture that uh, you basically try to adjust through different kind of plantations. The drainage system actually can be improved uh, with the help of suitable plant species grown in and around uh, the water table that through ground surface the recharge of ground water in a very uh, regulated manner can take place when we use proper plantation or proper plant species in an area. Some of the species as you know like uh, uh, vetiver works very good uh, not only for soil strengthening, soil you know, structure improvement, but also it uh, you know has its own uh, inputs into the soil for improving its quality. So it uh, not only reduces uh, flow of water, soil erosion, but also provides some inputs into the soil and also enhances the microbial activity dynamics in the soil. So in a sense that a plant species if it is properly chosen it not only reduces the impact of flood, it not only reduces the soil loss but at the same time can also uh, you know provide some other ancillary benefits. Bio drainage also reduce uh, you know the large increase of groundwater table and thus it can help in removing the excess soil water by plants with high transpiration rate. So such as uh, you know sometimes you will see eucalyptus, casuarina, alfalfa, poplar, willow these kind of plants are, are often used. But this kind of technology also has to be done with proper investigation on the ground level. As I said that choosing of appropriate plants for particular area is critical because every plant cannot be or should not be used uh, in any area uh, without the ground verification. Now continuing with flood uh, control, flood plain zone I know is very important and uh, flood inundation mapping through GIS and remote sensing these days help us to actually identify the exact area that which are the area is actually is uh, affected and then uh, various kind of you know engineering technologies can be used uh, for development or further improvement of flood affected area. Mostly that uh, the flood affected areas or flood prone areas classified as low to moderate uh, risk area and then high risk area, coastal areas and areas that are undermined. Now one thing is that construction work in these areas you know based upon the uh, return period of the flood that when it could uh, return again. In general you will find that residential, industrial and you know buildings and structures are for long return period about 100 years playground and parks relatively short term period roughly around 25 years. So these are the points that uh, we should also keep in mind. Now risk and damage reduction due to floods is also another point aspect that uh, under flood plain zone program one has to keep in, in mind. So as we see that uh, there are various uh, technological options are available also for you know flood management like our erosion management. Mm -hmm.